All right, I got a couple of interesting, 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 interesting things for you, chat. We were digging through the archives of Overwatch a little, uh, and we found a couple things. We found the seven-year-old IGN video, which talks about the old Overwatch defense role. How many people even know that this exists? Roles in Overwatch are more loosely defined guidelines than they are strict archetypes. The four classes of offense, defense, tank, and support are meant to give you a general sense of whether or not the heroes contained within will fit your playstyle. So what do defenders have to offer? Here's everything you need to know about the defense role in Overwatch. Oh man. Boasting the highest damage and lowest mobility, the defense role in Overwatch excels at guarding objectives and camping choke points. Do you guys know what this is? Do you, do you know what you're looking at? You probably don't even know what you're looking at here. Level three turrets. Also, did you notice the health bar on Torb, by the way, in the bottom left? Where Torb has 531 HP? And the turret has 800? <laughs> and, and the game mode, actually, good point! What game mode is this? Huh? What game mode is this? Choke points, what game mode is this turret, tech? Junkrat steel traps, and Bastion's sentry configuration can make assaulting an object- Holy shit. Look at this full HP Ryan just do a disappearing act. Duration can make assaulting and holy fing shit. You think you think time to kill in Overwatch 2 is too fast? Bro, this this man just got actually sent back to the Stone Age. Duration. Actually sent back to the Stone Age. To make assaulting an objective a dizzying prospect for the enemy team. In spite of their name, defensive heroes are no strangers to the attack round. Widowmaker can bring down squishy characters like Zenyatta in a single shot, and Hanzo's Dragon Strike Ultimate will make short work of enemy structures or stationary heroes. But don't rush headlong into battle without consideration. Junkrat and Widowmaker can sometimes escape to safety, but the other defenders aren't so mobile. Finally, some defensive heroes can take quite a beating. Bastion spawns with armor by default, and Torbjorn's Molten Core renders him all but invincible. And let's not forget about Mei. Her relentless Oh yeah, did you guys did you guys see uh, how long Molten Core would last? It was like 20 seconds of 500 HP, plus you could build your turret to level 3. About May, her relentless crowd control and impressive survivability make her a strong candidate for the tank category. If you're tasked with defending an objective, or if you're no stranger to the AWP in Counter-Strike, then defensive heroes are the ones Holy for shit, the AWP in Counter-Strike. Right Widow one-shotting with a body shot. Full charge. Overwatch, keep it right here on IGN. Damn, dude, that's a long time ago. That is a long, 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 long time ago. But to go with this, we found uh, it looks like a whole mini series here of hero guides done by GameSpot. Anna, Hanzo, Tracer, Zarya, Ryan, and Genji. Let's see how well these hold up over the years. Building stuff and being a general pain in the ass to anyone around you, then Torbjorn may be for you. Hey, folks. Okay. Chris Waters here. Am I crazy? Or does this old UI actually look super good? I'm just saying, I feel like this looks really, really good. And I don't know. It's like the today's UI kind of looks like washed out in comparison. I mean, the photos look terrible, right? Like what, what Hanzo looks like he just saw like into the abyss and the abyss stared back at him. Other than that, like, the, the actual borders, the numbers, you know, like, I, I, in my opinion, it looks good. Also, defensive role, damage, or offense, defense, tank, and support, where support was only Lucio, Mercy, Zen, and Sim. But Sim didn't heal, so, yeah. Here with Mike Mahardy, GameSpot's Overwatch Hero Guide series continues as we talk about the man, the dwarf, the tiny person, wow, with the turret. A bit. This turret is really where you should be focusing if you're playing Torbjorn. I mean, if you're not using your turret correctly and placing it correctly, how slow it is. It, your team might kind of get mad at you because Unk. that's your main focus. Unk. That's your thing, man. And the turret Unk. is like another player on the field, Unk. or at least it's another uh, asset to lock down positions, Raising to deny months. access to lanes to to really hassle the other team imagine uh, imagine playing uh, like super aggressive off-angle torb like this nowadays turret. so what are the keys to good turret placement and management so i prefer to keep it within distance don't be a dick distance of so like a 
payload path or a control zone and give it like an actual wide vision. Ah, uh, and the scrap, the so scrap. You're shooting there, but you also want to make sure that it's not exposed by a, in every angle. Try to put it with a corner behind it, or so. A this is level one turret, and then you're gonna build it up. You can kind of to level it. two, which it is now. To, because you're essentially functioning as a support for the turret. You're repairing it when people damage it. You are upgrading it. It starts more as an annoyance, right? Until you upgrade it to level two. You so if you're not noticing, you see down here this little bar. There's a bar that's filling up when he's hitting it. Hit it with your hammer see it? five times. It's filling up down here. And then it becomes. And then boom, damage. it becomes level two. But you really want to make sure that if people are chipping away at it, you're at least close by, or you're ready to put another one down in a better location. Yeah, and the yeah the two threats to your turret are you know Widowmaker and long range and Farah long range attacks, uh, and you know like a Reaper or a Tracer sort of flanking attacks. So if you can. Imagine saying nowadays the threat to your turret is a flanking reaper. I feel like people would look at you crazy. Either the flanking angles or the long range angles, you'll be in a good place to uh, help your turret survive. Now, in terms of upgrading, let's talk about that. Five hits with your hammer gets it to. Also, oh, the Winston just jumped in one v five. That's worth definitely doing when you're setting up on a point when enemies are not near you when you're setting up in the beginning. But if you're holy shit, down, everyone looks like a bot. In the of a fight. Put Everyone literally looks like a medium. game journalist. Don't waste time trying to upgrade it because you're going to do better damage with your rivet gun. Yeah, the rivet gun is actually a really good alternative. You've got the primary one, which is a little bit of an arc, but the shot oh. it does actually expel is pretty damaging. I mean, it takes some skill to use, but if you can land them, it does some damage. Yep, and it then, carries far. It's got some bullet drop, but again, yeah, you can really cause problems. And the alternate fire, the shotgun, is actually really good up close. Um, it's not my preferred way to play as Torbjorn. Uh, it can be a last resort, but if you're going up against, yeah, I don't know, say, like a tracer, it might be a good thing. If you go that guy's Reaper, name was Doomfist? It, was it? Shredded. But it is a very good alternative. But if you land those shots, you're going to do some really great damage. And I think people sleep on Torbjorn's... Wait, did you guys see that? <laughs> Old Scatter Arrow! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! The actual tank deletion machine! Sleep on Torbjorn's rivet gun a little bit too much. You are sort of two points of fire, your turret and your rivet gun. And Dude, imagine walking to the, the point and just like looking at the ground, looking to put down a turret on Torb nowadays. But also because you can collect scrap from any downed player, ally, or enemy. we were really so bots back in the Torb day. He's not just a defender. He's not just a good like alternative for offense. He's actually a support character too, and it really you want to stay mobile. Oh, you throw out the scrap, scrap, give everybody extra you armor packs. Armor down to your Widowmakers who might be exposed on a high perch, or your Reinhardts who are covering your team as you advance. He's this mesh of roles that really plays into a versatile character build. Those armor packs can really make a difference, especially for your really low health characters, your Zenyatas and your Symmetras, etc. But let's talk about Torbjorn's role on offense, because he's a natural fit for defense, for sure. Offense, you gotta be a little more situational in terms of how you can play Torbjorn effectively. Yeah, if you're quick with getting your turret down and you can constantly be putting new ones down, maybe above your group as they advance, or even on the payload, there's very specific situations where you can make use of that if it's a mobile thing, and the payload itself is inherently a mobile like, moving platform that you can take advantage of. Because the turret is damaged. Wait, they ta they're talking about what eventually be became pirate ship. And not just hanging back on defense. Absolutely. They're not showing an eclipse like of it. It's on the moving payload or on moving platforms like on the Volskaya Industries map. Now let's talk about his ultimate, Molten Core, because it doesn't just juice you, it juices your turret, but only if your turret is level 2. If your turret's level 1, it's going to be a little nastier, but if it's level 2, it will go to level 3, and all of a sudden you'll have this turret that's shooting Holy rockets and stuff, shit. and it's real gnarly. So rocket turrets! Ult, activate that ult when your turret's level 2, and you don't have to be anywhere near it either. If you die and respawn and you see that your turret is firing, you can fire that ult. Your turret will kick it up a notch, and that can be really crucial in defending points. And on top of that, Molten Core also gives you a ton of armor and your turret a ton of armor, so all of a sudden you can soak up a Dude, ton of- Dude, imagine popping Molten Core, like overload nowadays kind of thing, and instantly 500 and HP really with most of that being into armor. The fray, into the melee and Holy shit! Real mean work with that shotgun. Yeah, going back to what you said earlier about being these two points of fire, you are essentially kind of playing two characters almost, if you want to really look into it. And this Plus he has his scrap armor, so actually it goes powerful. even higher. It's you like 575 is, I think, the peak. Powerful. You could almost take down a Reaper if you're fast enough, although I wouldn't recommend that. And if you are You can almost take down a Reaper with 500 HP. Fire, you can start shredding Reinhardts from far away, while your turret just shoots him in the back when he turns his shields to take you on. It's a really versatile way to amp both your turret, which can be behind people, in front of people, and yourself, which can also be behind or in front. So then it makes two 
two of these things that people have to worry about. It makes it all the more dangerous on offense or mainly defense. Torbjorn can be a big threat and a big nuisance on the fields of Overwatch, and hopefully these tips help you be even more of a problem for your enemies. For more Overwatch, I love how the whole guides, tips subscribe to GameSpot. Is basically, Stay tuned. We've got the tip was basically just build a turret and then uh, heal the turret and then build the turret some more and then stand there, shoot things, build the turret. <laughs> The whole, the whole bit is just talking about building the turret. Oh, that's funny. German tanks, they are no strangers to the battlefield, and Overwatch has one itself. Reinhardt. Yes. Precision German Engineering. Tell me about this guy. He's good. Wait a minute. Hang on. Did you see it before the whole hog came in? 2000 HP shield. Precision German Engineering. 2000 HP shield. Engineering. 500 Tell me about health. this guy. He's good at sitting on payloads i know that for oh one. my goodness reinhardt is your objective dude all right like you are on the payload when it's moving you are pushing in to capture points you are using that big shield to be the front man for your team you are the front line as reinhardt he's and so, so slow you're right super valuable player you just play like a bot he's a pretty easy character to step in and play so what else does he do apart from the shield right we all see the shield it's great for sitting on points but what does he uh, do in terms of attacking you're, you're having the shield up, but people are going to want to get around your shield. They're going to want to get close to you to take you you're down. You're pushing in as the Rhine on screen backs out. Yeah, there has been zero pushing in so no, far. No. So when they get close, All right, the don't be afraid to just drop that shield and take some swings. Your hammer covers a big area. Take a few swings inside the spawn area. <laughs> see what junk you knock over. That's a good way to get a sense for just the kind of area Holy you shit. cover with those We hammers. hadn't even invented the idea of, of swing tracking where you follow the, like, the camera. Like, you flip your camera to follow where the hammer is so like if your hammer is on the left side you flip your camera to the right so that you get like maximum reach slash you know like you can hit everybody with it we hadn't even invented that yet hammer swings excellent so what about the charge obviously he's able to charge them people slam them up against walls when should you be using this and when should you not the charge is tricky because you don't want to charge way past your team get caught behind enemy lines because they will eat the entire you marty dom don't want literally ate the entire fucking marty dom way past your team get intentionally your did not move you, up. you also don't want to go flying off into oblivion there are a lot of <laughs> edges on these maps and don't worry it's a reinhardt rite of passage we've it all done it to us <laughs> <laughs> but the charge is great for singling out offense heroes who are trying to get your goat because you will pin them and you will kill them in one shot get your also, goat if tanks like roadhog and winston are meddling all up in your face you pin them not only do they get a bit of a stun uh, and get a chunk of their health out, but you'll be able to swing on them and bring them down. And also the charge is really an eye-catching move. So your teammates sees you running off with Winston, they're gonna pile on the damage they're gonna take down. That's cap. What about his fire strike? <laughs> it seems like it That's almost gets in the cap. Oh, imagine you seeing your Ryan pin, you're like, oh, everybody follow, who's he pinning? No, you're going, what the f are you doing? a projectile mm. so you can throw out this projectile and it does do significant damage it covers a pretty good area so uh and it also goes through shields mm. so you can harass an enemy reinhardt that way no i know this is a game journalist but what in the f is this we're trying to show off how fire strike works uh, and you so, uh, eat and it, it, it into the goddamn shields, ground so you can harass an enemy reinhardt that way. is that that way you can get through Winston's shields. Uh, you can really cause some ha you can cause some disruption. And so I say use that as frequently as you can. It's worth dropping the shield for a hot second to throw it out. Even if a turret is sort of focusing down on you because- What did the message the say? What are you talking about? Way at that turret, you can get your shield right back up and then you're back in the protecting business. He's got a pretty uh, meaty ult in Earth Shatter. Mm -hmm. It's able to knock down a bunch of people. When should you be using that? Can you do Dude, this is some serious, crazy game journalism shit. What in the f***? It was like, okay, let's show off how good Shatter it's is, right? Earth Shatter, it's able to knock down a bunch of people. When should you be using whiff into a wall? Like, I understand this is seven years ago, so people are a little bit more of bots, but like, this is some serious bot shit. Enough. Can you do it on your own, or should you have some backup? Throwing the hammer down, rock, knocks people down in a cone in front of you and deals damage. Mm. Then you can wade in and sort of get a few hammer swings in before they kick back up. Wait, this guy's clicking on every swing. Look at this. Wait, he clicks for every swing. Or should you have some backup? He's clicking for every down, swing. Rock, knocks people down in a cone in front of you and deals damage. Mm. Then you can wade in and sort of get a few. See, there was the two, and then one, but if you get and then one. Down, or if you get a tank down, you're probably not going to be able to take them out yourself. Teaming up with other players to do damage, 
to help shoot the characters who are on the ground, maybe throw their alt in there, a Pharah alt, a Junkrat alt. Those can be great damage multipliers and a great way to take down a significant chunk of the team fast. So who are some of the matchups that are going to... So when I, we talk about why Shatter kind of sucks nowadays, this was Those old Shatter. This guy's f***ing terrible. Like, this is seven years ago, so we'll give him a little a bit of a break. But damage this Shatter was so long that this guy could Shatter, look at the Mercy on the ground for a sec, left click, stop, left click, stop, left click, the and then still kill her. Great way to take down One, a significant chunk of the team. Two, fast. so who are some three. of the matchups that because are Because it, it used to be a three second stun. I work at best for you. Who does your shield sort of work against, and who are you most exposed with with Reinhardt? Well, the shield is a great way to make Soldier 76, make Widowmaker, make these characters that are trying to do mid range to long range damage. Uh, to take them out of the game almost, you know, make them reposition because you can soak take up out a lot Widow from the game by putting up your Rhine shield. <laughs> of course, the shield does that did not age well. To recharge, and you will have characters who just hammer on your shield just to make it go down. Whenever you're not using it, yeah, it's you walk so slow with shield out. Exposed, so use some of the alcoves to duck into. People aren't necessarily going to pursue you in there because you have a huge hammer. <laughs> so you can usually take a second, just try. Yeah, that didn't age well either to communicate to your teammates when the shield is going down. And if you're playing with a Reinhardt, keep an eye on the shield yourself. Cracks start to show yeah. when it's going to go down. So, you know, you can't put all the blame on Reinhardt when all of a sudden that Bastion turret is hammering you down. I always feel like when I'm playing as Reinhardt that when I hear Junkrat say fire in the hole, I get the hell out of dodge. Is there any other sort of characters you should be wary of? You know who gets my goat all the time is May. Yeah. She comes up and she can freeze you and then she can headshot you with her ice bolt. Just standing at the edge of the fucking mail. Uh, comes up and she can freeze you and then just stand in there. Fucking shield up, she freezing. Doesn't fucking move and just dies. Ice bolt and then you're dead. What and it's in like the, the size discrepancy in the entire game, but I mean, David beats Goliath. Dude, look at how long it takes to break 2,000 shield. And it's like the, the whole team shooting at this guy. And his shield just takes forever to break. Game. If this was today's Overwatch, would have blinked and he would have went into I mean, the next universe. Goliath every almost every time. <laughs> so you want to close with May very quickly, hit her with a fire strike, maybe get a hammer swing in, or just back up and get your team to help you out. Just remember, you can point the shield in any direction. You can adapt for when a Genji or a Tracer gets behind you. If a Pharah is above you, you can block the whole play that. style but is sit there and hold your shield. Up, Holy shit! Sure, like every German tank, the weak point is at the back, so you got to be careful when you're playing as Reinhardt. Thanks so much for the tips, Chris, and for more tips on Overwatch, stay tuned to GameSpot.com and hit that subscribe. Subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs>
if you are chipping away at a turret that does see you, you What's are in danger friend? of getting melted down by a Bastion real quick. This is where some tricky deflection can come into play. The deflection is probably his most important ability. Not only can it protect you, but it can also just turn people's attacks back on them. And there's also a few second gap between when you start and end, so you don't always have to time it perfectly, but it still helps to know when they're going to attack and be patient and wait for it so you can fling an arrow back at Hanzo or get a headshot right back at Widowmaker's face. Yep, I think the best way to start using it is when you're expecting There's not a chance whoever we're watching so has ever done that before. that's from a McCree that happens to get close to you. That's from Ooh. a Bastion. You could even bait a Bastion, you know, throw three Wait, my guy, my guy was actually in death range you for a dash? A he could die from a dash right here and he doesn't dash him, bastion, he just looks at him. You know, throw three Holy shit. And turn and face you and then you dodge away. Step back into the line of fire, it will deflect wherever your reticle is aiming. So whether that's back at Bastion or at the support who's healing Bastion, take your pick, aim right, and you can really mess him up. And you can also deflect ultimates. So if Zarya happens to shoot a Graviton Surge into your group and your group is like, oh shit, we're going to be sucked in together. No, you can deflect that and then the other group gets sucked in and then you guys can kill them. You can also deflect Hanzo's Dragon Strike arrow before the dragons come out if you time it well and it'll shoot them right back at his brother. Those are feats of timing. And again, back to that. That's high skill ceiling that Genji has. But, you know, when you're first starting out Damn. working out your Genji skills, what you're going to use mostly as a weapon I love how is much your people, everyone looks like a boss. Because you can climb up walls to get to places where people don't see you. If you're in an engagement, Watch you Lucio can next. Jump. Oh, the Lucio would probably be big, pretty good. But it's enough to disorient an enemy who's picturing your trajectory going one way, and you make it go another. Disorientation, Wait, hitting what was and it? then running, this is like the great way to play Genji. And it does, like you said, Mike, require patience. And that's the thing with his dashing strike, too. It also, if you kill them with it, Holy it'll shit. recharge right away, and you'll I have it ready really to rock again. This dash is really important, because not only does it let you, you cross gaps, you might not kill. otherwise be able to close the gaps True, to actually. enemies who are harrying or who you want to focus down on. But it also, yeah, if it kills, it resets immediately. So you start to think of Genji in terms of combos of shuriken throws, swift strikes, and then also the quick melee attack. Even reflective. Genji is so good at chipping down very quickly. Make that quick melee uh, attack part of your repertoire. I haven't been using it a ton with other God. characters. With Genji, it can really make the difference in one of his encounters. It's also really great for flanking an opponent. So if you're staring him in the face, say a Reinhardt, these are some that, cliffs. Get a little damage on him, but you're also behind a shield when you turn around. <laughs> Finally, his ultimate, the Dragon Blade, pretty self-explanatory. Oh my out a God! Sword and Eight second Dragon out. Blade. Dude, imagine nowadays popping the Dragon Blade around a corner and just like walking in. And, like, and then squishier, goes for the turret first. On then the uh, Roadhog. Oh my but God! Keep in mind that you can do your swift strike. There's bra you there is actual bronze well. players that know better than this today. Is key Isn't that crazy? To around, causing chaos and chopping everyone to bits. It's also worth noting that you might want to initiate. Wait, he didn't kill a single person with this one can do your deflect in this mode as well. The swift strike especially is key to moving around. Wait, you, he lost them and then and they remacked. It's also worth Why would you show these? This right before you enter is the this supposed to be flaming the people who are playing? Like, hey, because if you do it in the middle, again, you're a squishy guy. You could be killed and wasted. Do it like around a corner, then come in, start taking out the Lucios, start taking out the Reinhards that are blocking the objective. <laughs> Focus on really- Why are all the, why are all the blades? Deaths! See what your plan is. They haven't gotten a single okay, kill yet. And know what you're going to do. And that's the way you get into Genji, folks. Hopefully this guide gets you on your way to being the ninja badass you've always dreamed of. For more Overwatch Hero guys... Holy... Okay, so they were saving the, the, the good clip for the end. <laughs> that's so funny. Dude, they... That one didn't age as badly, but good lord, the gameplay... I, I, oh, the gameplay aged like... Rotting milk. Lucio's will be very would, interesting because Lucio's actually had some major changes since this probably came out seven years ago. So I'm down. I'm down. What's up, Daniel Dwyer here with more tips for Overwatch. Chris Waters, I feel like Lucio is one of the characters that people pick the least, uh, but he's also one of the most effective. The audio medic, as it were, uh, is capable of doing quite a lot on the battlefield. Holy shit, Chris, low let's break ground, it down. literally in front of the Lucio. choke. Lucio is my man. And Floor I think CO. the reason some people shy away Flats, from him is didn't one of the most powerful. Better. The game was still new and honestly the best time of our Overwatch life. No, I know, I know, but it's funny to look back on. The things you can do as Lucio is just be around your team. Yeah. His passive ability, which is to heal anyone within line of sight, is super valuable. Did you hear that? Heal anyone within line of sight. It wasn't the aura. So what ended up being the pro strat was you just wall ride across the top of the map.
responsible for pushing payloads, for keeping teams alive, for, you know, being on points. And really, you just have to be near people. Uh, of course, you can switch from healing to the speed. The speed is, uh, I would say, more of a situational thing. Mm. Your default <laughs> should be healing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the time. Is speed used probably mostly at the start of maps, right? At the start of maps, when you respawn. Also, once your team is healed up, you know, you can give them that little mid-match mm. sort of juicing. But let's talk about healing, because this is still his most important thing. You are around people. Ah, uh, yes, Lucio people for his okay, healing. It'll tell you how many Indeed. The Amp It Up ability, which juices your healing and kicks it up a notch, is super good for saving teammates. And you want to keep an eye on those silhouettes and those critical... Holy health Overwatch is great at signaling to you how your teammate's health is doing. You want to respond to that as Lucio. And it's probably easier to use him in terms of other healers because... Okay. I understand this is seven years ago. I understand. To watch. I understand we're watching it. game journalist footage. But there was no steadfast passive for Reinhardt at this time. How, your how in the actual f do you miss this juicy boop? As Lucio. It's probably easier to use him in terms of other healers because he just kind of heals everyone around him. It's not like you have to be so, so worried about your positioning. And what about his ult? When should you kick that in? Just whenever it comes around or in specific situations? So his ult throws down these huge... Wait, I think the Pharah died. Specific situations. So his ult... The Pharah died. They hid the kill ca kill feed. Whenever it comes around or... In the Pharah f dies. Specific 225 HP Lucio because of the Simma, the Simma shield gen. Sure. She f***ing dies, so and then Pops oh. beats! <laughs> Throws down these huge shields buffs for anyone, again, in eyesight, and it's great for countering a team push or when you are trying to push in on something. Uh, it can also help you if... Ah, uh, yes. Is Beat in with nobody you there. Or you're drawn into Zarya's ultimate trap. Beat in when nobody's there again. High damage, burst damage. Okay, at least the people are here this time. That's good. Situations. Uh, so Lucio can get around the map pretty easy. He's got a wall right ability as well. Uh, when should you be using that? And also, what positioning should you be using for Lucio? Where should you uh, be Ah, yes. Let's see some wall riding. Wall ride, I picture it as more of almost a wall Holy jump shit. being more valuable. Because what you want to do is make yourself hard to hit. Hmm. You take one Wait, shot. Wait, hang from on. What are you saying? I'm going to back this up. I picture it as more of almost a wall jump as being more valuable because what you want to do is make yourself hard to hit. Hmm. You take one shot from a Widowmaker, you stay in Bastion's sights for two seconds, you are done. <laughs> you've got no, you've got low, low health. Hmm. But if you're nimble, if you're always hopping around, sort of doing little kick flips off the wall and stuff, that's going to help you stay alive. And you want to stay near your team because you are also. Wait, this is total mayhem gameplay, isn't it? This isn't, this isn't even normal gameplay, this is total mayhem. So a damage dealer that uh, needs to be reckoned with. Yeah, agree. his default gun is actually pretty good. Wait, like so he, they talked about the wall riding and showed us literally zero wall riding. This was the wall ride. This was the wall ride they showed us. This one. Fight. The wall ride, I picture it as more of almost a that wall was the wall ride as being more valuable because what you want to do is make yourself hard to hit. Hmm. You take one shot from a Widowmaker, you stay in Bastion's sights for two my seconds. Hit, my hit, you my are finger. Done. You've got no, you've it's got twitching. low, low health. Hmm. But if you're nimble, if you're always hopping around, sort of doing little kick flips off the wall and stuff, that's going to help. That's you total mayhem. Line. That's why it's 400 HP. Team because Watch the cooldown. It's off every three seconds. That uh, needs to be reckoned with. Yeah, degree. his default gun is actually pretty good at like dealing a nice steady amount of damage onto big foes and onto smaller ones too. Chipping away at tanks is very valuable. You can also... See, now it's back to 200. They were playing... You total mayhem. in and out, you sort of edge uh, a Torbjorn turret or a Bastion. That can help, but you're always, always just firing. Sending those bullets in towards the enemy, and then, of course, the alternate hmm. fire is uh, a push-off, which is great for survivability. Yeah, when should you be using this is that? the wall Someone riding in the room face, with us. Like, well, I don't need to be next to a Roadhog right now. <laughs> you want to bounce him with the alt fire oh, of man. your gun because it will push back. Of course, there's also a bunch of capture maps uh, on the assault mode that are real juicy for bumping people off the ledge. Oh, it's beautiful. If you can score those, you're going to put a smile on your Just face. make sure you're not up against a character who's actually able to get back up when you do that because they're going to be pretty angry. Uh, last. This is so savable. Get back up when you there's a f***ing wall. They're, they're literally on the wall. They're looking at it. Be they're angry. licking it. Uh, Nothing. Last point on this, matchups. Perfect time to show wall riding. After this, Perfect though, time. Staying away from. Well, you don't want to be close to anybody, really, because anyone with a moderate amount of damage is going to be able to beat you in mm. close quarters. You know, you could chase down a God, someone's going to look back at my gameplay in Overwatch seven years from now and be like, yep, that guy was a 
and bot. always be firing towards the enemy. And it's okay if you're taking fire from a Soldier 76 or uh, any other sort of medium damage character because you are constantly healing yourself, mm. which makes you medium damage. So if you want to be a crossfading ass reggae looking medic man, you should pick Lucio. And for more tips on all of the Overwatch characters, sub here and stay tuned. To get Holy shit. That was uh, something. Uh, let's do D.Va. Why not? D.Va. She's a tank. She's an all-star gamer. And she is a force to be reckoned with in Overwatch. Chris Waters here with Mary Kish in GameSpot's Overwatch Hero Guides. Mary, uh, let's talk about D.Va and what, what's the best 500 way 500 HP D.Va. Well, you're going to start with your fusion cannons. And the best part about these are they have no reload. So I just always want to be, be shooting. Bang, bang. Back in Look time it. And play Overwatch Look it. For the first time. Do you see this? Defense Matrix on a cooldown. And there's no rockets. It is only flight and defense matrix. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, your E was defense matrix. Yeah, the fusion cannons, they're good in close range, though, right? This is not something you want to be engaging at mid-distance or across the map. She is a tank. She is meant to be in your face. She's meant to shoot at close range. Get right up in their faces and shoot them. And getting close so Violet, uh, before you start cranking not. away on the fusion cannons watching these. because they do... You can move while you're firing, but they slow you down significantly. So you want to get close and... Dude, how... Look at how slow you move. Wait, they're actually moving while shooting. ...but they slow you down significantly. Holy so you shit, want to you barely get close, move! And one of the best ways to get close is use those boosters. That's right. It has a really, really quick cooldown. Really quick cooldowns, five seconds. Down, so use them all the time. Use them as soon as you can, as much as you want. You will Wait. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was slow motion. All the time. Use this them is a sim right click. Them as soon you. as you can. <laughs> God, dude, you almost kind of pet that thing on the way by. As soon as you can, yeah. as much as you want. You also knock people backwards, and you deal damage to people. Oh my if God! You hit. If you just plow right into them. And these okay, I do need to find the sim one, I guess. Philosophy of playing diva, right? You are not, you know, necessarily wading in to the front lines and doing. You are darting around to the side. You are flanking. You are mixing things up on the back line. You are really causing what trouble. What in the, the f is this facing? Because game you journalist can boost tracking. so frequently. And then once you're up close, no one wants to be up close to a diva. That's right, and and you can use that to mess with the other team in terms of their positioning as well. If they're all trying to be in one solid formation, you can actually move their tank out of the way, mm -hmm. which is really unfortunate. Or their healer. Yeah, if you need to push someone. Up. Did they heal? Say healer, not support. <gasps> Off of a point, boom, get your boosters going. And uh, she's also got the defense matrix. Now this, as a tank, one of your main Holy priorities shit. is to. Ten Second cooldown for DM. damage for your team, and the defense matrix is another way that Diva does that because it just straight up neutralizes projectiles. Yeah, it, it it absorbs damage not just from people's guns, but actually a lot of ults, including what is this Reaper ult? Oh what yeah, in the and, game journals around <laughs> this defense matrix. And Wait, holy shit! Stacy's mom just got smoked. Look how much damage this that shit did. Reaper ult. Oh yeah, any any time bum, 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 it's it just dead. Totally neutralize it. Farah's death from above. So satisfying to just shut that entire thing down with Ghostly the defense matrix. Wants. And that's also a good way to help you close distance when you are trying to when you are moving towards a character to fire up your fusion cannons. Defense matrix on the way in, they won't be able to get you, and then you can just start cranking away. That's right, but you can't use your Dude, defense matrix. Holy with shit! Your deleting the torb. Shooting actually cancels your matrix, so use it with your boosters to to move Wait, around. Wait, rare footage. Back when a tank could one v one a support. Nowadays, yeah, this would be like a crime. And so shooting actually cancels your matrix, so holy use it with shit! Your boosters to to move around without getting hurt, uh, but you can't shoot during that. Yeah, you can actually Nowadays, cancel both the defense yeah, right. and the boosters in case you need to start shooting someone right away, which is a handy trick. Now, D.Va's ult is basically to just blow up her entire mech and cause a lot of problems for everyone. It is a massive damage radius. You can throw your mech into battle by using boosters, Wait. and then you hit your ult. actually propels your mech into the fight. Wait, got kills! Huge! That is such a good trick. That's a clip for our slash overwatch. I did it successfully, it felt so good. But yeah, you can you can shoot it right, right on the ground, you can lob it. Uh, <laughs> Wait, wait, this is back in the day when you could die to your own diva bomb. She got, they got no kills except themselves. Felt so good, but yeah, you can, you can shoot it right, right on the ground. You oh can lob it uh, up by sort of angling up, but using your boosters with that 
alt is a great way to catch people off guard. Uh, to because it is it does draw a lot of attention to itself. It starts pulsing and beeping and like you know everyone gets real alarmed. Uh, so if it's moving in on a point or something like that, it's a great way to catch people with their pants down. I killed it's three. Evade, but if you use it with Reinhardt's ult, which is Earth Shatter, so people can't move, or Zarya's Gravitron, they're all sucked in. Use it then. And once you've used that, you are now in D.Va's alternate form, which is like, it's just D.Va. She's running around, she's got a gun. Uh, the gun can do some decent damage, especially if you're hit scoring headshots. But again, uh, she's real squishy in this mode, and you are really just trying to like get some fire right, on this looks normal. so that your ult comes back and you can call your mech down. Yeah, her light gun does damage You'd from You'd be a, a pro range, back then? So Dude, I'd be the best tank player friend, that ever lived nowadays. Range. You, uh, you get your- Holy shit, dude. I could take a f***ing nap by the time this thing so hit. go ahead and- Holy shit, dude. Hit you <laughs> people at a range. You, uh, you get your ult really fast <laughs> when you're just your diva girl <laughs> mode. So as long as you're shooting people, you're gonna be able to call your mech down really oh fast. Oh my when god. You down, not only does it push everyone away, it also does damage. Someone pushed me off the ledge with the mech call down, and I was so embarrassed and impressed, I wasn't even mad. Another embarrassing thing is you can blow yourself up with that mech, so stay away from it. It can hurt you, but it won't hurt your allies. All the more reason to use those boosters. So there you have Damn. it. That's D.Va. Use those boosters, get around the enemy, harry them, shut down their fire, and then blow them all to smithereens. For more Overwatch Hero guides, keep it tuned to GameSpot.com. Okay, that one was actually pretty good. That was a pretty good one. I like that one. What's that you say? Overwatch has a new hero? Well, unless it's... Wait, is this one only six years old? This one's only six years old. This was July 27th, 2017. Oh my god. Dude, I was in college. I'm, I haven't even graduated college yet. Holy Doomfist, shit. Doomfist, I don't want to hear about it. Wait, what's that? <clears throat> it is Doomfist? Then what the hell are we waiting for? Let's get this hero guide on the road. Those who rise up. Their names will be remembered forever. In case you haven't been keeping track, the rocket punching Nigerian is Holy the shit, remember? We all thought his voice actor was gonna be Terry Crews. I remember. Holy shit. Dude, holy shit. That's a throwback. This addition to the Overwatch lineup, and he's been a long time coming. Ever since the first hint of his existence a year ago, fans have been foaming at the mouth for any kind of Doomfist info. Oh man, they said he could level a skyscraper. Well, he's here, he's real, and I'm going to teach you how to play him. But first, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any more Overwatch videos. Alright? Old Doom. Let's go. Thanks, I'll Sean. tell you right off the bat, Doomfist might be one of the most diverse damage dealers in the game. His assortment of abilities allows you to get pretty creative with how you approach- It's crazy how much better- It's only been one year since we watched those other ones. How much better the players look already. Like, how much less, like, bots they look like. And gives each encounter a unique experience. Like, they're actually hitting so shots. With the basics. They're actually Doom walking around using their abilities. It's a mid to long range shotgun blast that deals a decent amount of damage, but you can only shoot it four times before it needs to recharge. This means you won't be chasing people around and shooting them much, but, I mean, your name is Doomfist. Emphasis on the fist part. The hand cannon should mostly be used to get in some damage while you're waiting for your other abilities to cool down. Speaking of which... The rocket Holy shit, punched in one shot of support? A punch. That's this illegal! That's f***ing illegal! Doomfist proves himself worthy of the name. This is where we separate the adults from the children. Hold down the secondary fire button to wind up the haymaker, and release it when you're fully charged, or when some poor soul walks in front of you. Oh my deal god! Deal damage, stun them for a second, and, here's the best part, slam them into a nearby wall for even more damage. Oh, Aside from doom. pushing enemies into the sides of buildings, the rocket punch is also a great means of transportation. A fully charged punch will travel about 30 meters, which is just far enough for you to cross that gap in Hanamura. The range on rocket punch- Oh yeah, it's just far enough to make this gap. Hanamura. Travels all the way to the f***ing stairs. The range on rocket punch also means you'll be able to charge people from a distance, as it travels much faster than Reinhardt's charge, so I'll use it to get quick months. on your enemies. But my favorite way to use it is to charge up as you're walking around corners, feeding a surprise knuckle sandwich to Mercy anyone unfortunate enough to be in your crosshairs. Wow. Just uh, you know mind, what? You can't aim the punch upwards or downwards. It's crazy how much better everyone is already. So if Farah is annoying you, Doomfist has his rising uppercut to help you out. What the f- 
ability and he'll do his best Ryu impression, rocketing himself into the air along with anyone else who happens to be standing in front of you. It's a great melee attack, but the altitude you gain by performing it might be the most important thing. It gives Doomfist an escape option, which is pretty crucial considering he has no other defensive abilities and he only has 250 health. But Rising Uppercut is only half the story. Once you're in the air, you can continue the combo with Seismic Slam, which causes Doomfist to smash into the ground, knocking enemies silly, and causing damage depending on how far your slam travels. It uses CC? You'll be able to aim the slam, as a small cone will appear whenever you're airborne, indicating <clears throat> your landing spot. The f***ing cone! Oh my god. Also, the travel distance on Seismic Slam has a deceptively long range, so if you're in a tight spot and need to escape, Doing a rising uppercut, then a seismic slam at the very apex of your jump will get you right the hell out of dodge. Put these three abilities together and what have you got? A deadly combo that will lay waste to all but the beefiest of beefcakes. Oh, by the way, did I say that he has 250 health? I meant 280. Wait, no, three, 325. Actually, 400? Okay, so what you see here is his passive ability, the best defense, in action. For every hit that you land with one of Doomfist's abilities, you'll gain a temporary 30 point shield. And for every hit you land with Damn. his ultimate, you'll get an additional 70 point shield. And his passive ability is what ties everything it's together. It encourages you to constantly attack the other team, use your abilities at every opportunity, and be an all around disruption. Now it's entirely possible to play Doomfist defensively, rocket punching your way into the enemy team and then leaping out when things get hairy. But with some of the most impressive tools in the game, I've been nice thinking Doomfist will be a staple in team comps for a while. Not only is he the most anticipated hero to date, he's got the damage and skill set to boot. And finally, Doomfist yeah. Ultimate Meteor. He was strike. kind of oppressive. Using ultimate will shoot Doomfist straight but into the air, and your had some of the highest skill expression of any character ever released. Landing spot. Now you'll have five Wait, seconds to is move. Is this when Meteor all actually around, killed at things? At point, you'll come crashing back down to Earth. Wait, it actually killed things back, back then. I forgot about that. that circle. The amount of damage will depend on how close they were to the center of your circle. Yeah, it, it could actually get kills. Distracted by other heroes or in an enclosed space like a hallway or stairwell. Rolled. Also, if you're really desperate, you can use it to get away. During the ultimate, Doomfist is all the way up in the air where nobody can target him. So in an emergency, you can activate the ult, shoot up into the sky, and fly far away to safety. Meteor Strike is a great Damn. ultimate to combo with other characters as well, like a Mei or Reinhardt. Or even get Zarya to throw Flats, a graviton surge if you first remember, for an easy Doom couple in of the kills. PTR for like three months I know it's so early on, but release. Doomfist might already be the most uh, enjoyable and satisfying. I do kind of remember use. actually. If you crave short range, it was the beginning of characters fighters, being a little bit slower because it was used to be every three months. Work, is and then it started to be like a little bit slower than that for releases. To become fluent with his abilities, but like the fighting games that most definitely influenced Doomfist's design. Your patience is rewarded with a satisfying combo and hopefully a win for you and your team. And, what? and that's it. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about Doomfist. Now, if you guys have any questions or tips, I love how much better the gameplay is after Doomfist, one year, though. Leave it's them crazy. in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. Alright, you and found if you the someone watching this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel, and maybe even check out the 24 other hero guides that we have for the characters. Alright, see you guys next time.